This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur and today I'm going to share an unusual intraoperative complication and let's try to analyze why it happened and uh, once it happens how to proceed further. This is a 70-year-old lady and posterior of capsular cataract. The case looks almost innocuous, nothing special about this case. The rexis is done, hydrodissection is being performed, the time to emulsify the nucleus and the nucleus is emulsified in a routine manner using the vertical chop technique. It's all good until now. And time to remove the cortex. Just a little bit of cortex is there and I begin aspirating the cortex and out of the first few areas of the cortex aspiration, I reach this area to aspirate it and as I'm doing, the maneuvers are extremely routine, nothing, anything unusual, but I see the rexus margin getting torn at this stage. So that was surprising because there was nothing unusual about the maneuvers which I was doing. I really couldn't understand why it happened. So maybe I was suspecting something wrong with the finishing of the cannula. Uh, that could be the reason. Now once the capsule is torn, what are my strategies here? My first goal is to ensure that the chamber does not shallow because even though it is at the fag end of the surgery, if I'm a little bit careless, uh, there is a chance that this tear can extend radially beyond the equator and reach the posterior capsule and cause a posterior capsule tear as well. So my goal is to ensure that the chamber equilibrium is maintained throughout. So before removing my irrigation handpiece, I go ahead and inject OVD so that the chamber does not collapse suddenly. Now there is still some amount of cortex left in this area, but I would want to deal with that later. First, I'd like to go ahead and put in the lens and then take care of the cortex at a later stage. So this was the planned lens in this eye. This is a multi-piece uh, hydrophobic IOL and the lens is to be implanted into the bag. Again, the importance of, you know, keeping the bag very well inflated when you're trying to maneuver the lens is extremely important. As I'm trying to inject the lens into the eye, I feel that the bag has collapsed a little bit. So I stop my implantation process and use OVD to refill the bag and try to pressurize it and push it back a little bit. I don't want the posterior capsule to be projecting up because it could complicate things much more. And in fact, I could still have a posterior capsule tear while managing these haptics of a multi-piece lens. So it's very important to realize that the bag might not be very well distended and I take care to reform it. Once the bag is well formed and the posterior capsule is not taut and has been pushed back, maneuvering the lens into the bag becomes much more easy and less traumatic to the capsular bag as well as the posterior capsule. Once the lens looks well settled in the bag, time to deal with the cortex in the other area. Now before that, I'm going to go ahead and check the cannula whether it has got any rough edges or something. It doesn't seem to be having one. So I just go ahead and use the same cannula. And as I'm aspirating this last bit of cortex, again the same thing happens. So although it was not evident microscopically, the problem was really with the cannula itself. So that's what I drew the final conclusion. The OVD in front of the lens has been aspirated, but the OVD behind the lens, I'm not going to remove it simply because it could worsen the situation, which is already bad now. The tears can extend beyond the equator, so I'm worried about that. That's the reason I'm opting not to remove the OVD behind the lens in this situation. Since the two edges of the rexis are torn, the rexis is incomplete essentially, the OVD which is trapped behind the lens will have access to flow out and usually will get cleared off in a, a day or two. Time to do the stromal hydration. The stromal hydration is continued on uh, the main incision as well as the other side port. The lens looks to be well centered and stable. The conclusion with this case was aspiration cannulas which are not having good finishing can be the culprits causing these rexus tears during cortex aspiration. So it's mandatory that we inspect them before using them. And once we have a capsular tear, it's extremely important to maintain the chamber equilibrium because even at the fag end of the surgery, if you're not careful, there is every likelihood that they can extend beyond the equator and run towards the posterior capsule. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.